The Legacy of Lot by Andrew Musgrave Miss Prudence Doyley was a strict Presbyterian. She had had the Ten Commandments drummed into her from an early age. Thou shalt not bear false witness, though of course diplomatic white lies are acceptable. Thou shalt not covet Mrs Fernley Cooper's petunias. Thou shalt not idolise Cliff Richard. Her well-thumbed Bible was disintegrating, and it was only the matte black backing paper that held it together. Sometimes she dreamed of a new kitchen, a new pedal cycle, a new hat, but get thee behind me Satan was the most well-practised phrase she used. In a moment of weakness, after errant wishful thinking, she had dared conjure a sequence of numbers for that devil's game but every time the lottery numbers were broadcast after the ten o'clock evening news, she would close her eyes and turn her hearing aid off, just in case bad fortune be out to mock her. Then one morning, after a visit to Reverend Jeremiah's prayer meeting at the Bethesda Kirk, she called in at the newsagents for her monthly copy of sewing for charity. She saw spread out before her the array of little plastic racks stacking the neatly arranged lottery tickets, each in their allotted places. Miss Doyley was ever so proud that none of these tempted her in the slightest, and she said so forthrightly to the forbearing newsagent. But on her way home, she paused for a few seconds outside her wicket gate to peer at next-door neighbour's sunflowers, which were almost neck and neck with her own. Yet she was confident God shone his sun more brightly on her own garden. As she lingered a moment longer to see if the nosy neighbour's net curtains made their usual tell-tale twitch, she noticed something stuck to a piece of chewing gum on the sole of her sandal. Discreetly she hobbled over the granite chippings of her own garden path and, hidden by high pericum and wisteria, took her sandal off on the front step. Stuck to the sole of her footwear was, yes you guessed it, a lottery ticket and it was franked with today's date. Prudence shuddered. It's the devil's work, she thought, but she daren't touch it with her bare hands. She tried prizing it off with the broom handle kept in the porch, but alas, riddled with woodworm, that snapped in her grasp. She tried scraping it off on the metal boot grate, but that merely smeared the offending piece of paper with rust-streaked mud. There was nothing for it but to peel it off with her own fingers. Dumbfounded, she squinted at the sequence of numbers. They were the exact numbers she would have chosen herself. Perhaps God was speaking to her. Whirring suddenly through her mind, she was bombarded with pleasant good thoughts. Like a crazy disconnected dream, she spotted in her mind a conveyor belt of delights in this order. A new church roof, a new hat, a new broom, a present for the Reverend Jeremiah, a new hat, a garden full of petunias, a new Honda 50, a basket of new fabric for the sewing charity. Oh, and a new hat! All day long she could think of nothing except for the throbbing maelstrom of conflicting aspirations. Perhaps God has chosen me, she thought again, 
and could not wait until 10.45 p.m. when Thomas Schaffernacker had finished his pedantic prophecies posing possibly precipitous portents. As the lottery numbers appeared on the screen, she peered between her wizened fingers that covered her eyes, and only partially turned down her hearing aid. But like a miracle, you guessed right again, the numbers were hers, and yes, she had won! That night she could not sleep. Her mind raced uncontrollably as she tossed and turned beneath the flower-embroidered bedspread. On her way to Kirk the next morning, with fervent steps, she had a divine mission to perform. Reverend Jeremiah, waiting on the church porch steps, waved to her from a distance, but with an air of arrogance, Prudence walked on. First stop, the newsagent, to ask what to do with the winning ticket. Today, Kirk will be second stop. Even so, Reverend Jeremiah will be proud of me, she mused, very proud. We don't usually see you here on Sunday mornings, Miss Doyley, greeted the newsagent as a tinkling bell heralded her crossing of the threshold mat. In front of her, a little huddle of villagers had gathered, including a very tearful Mrs. Fernley Cooper, and they were all consoling her. Mrs. Fernley Cooper has lost her lottery ticket, and it was a winning number announced the newsagent. You didn't happen to pick it up by accident, Miss Doyley, when you popped in yesterday? Miss Doyley went suddenly very pale. Uh, no, no, she stumbled. Lottery tickets. No, I can't abide them. Devil's work they are. And all her prejudices tumbled out uncontrollably. Miss Doyley vacated the shop rather hurriedly, embarrassed, contrite, and without purchasing anything. She went straight ahead to the chapel and barely glanced at Reverend Jeremiah as he greeted the other worshippers at the entrance door. She sat at a pew in her regular spot, three rows from the front, two spaces in on the right, and began contemplative prayer while the congregation warbled from the old Sankey hymnal, Come thou fount of every blessing, Prudence could only mouth the words. Her mind was unfocused and confused, and she just mechanically followed others as they sang, sat, prayed, and listened to the Bible reading about how Lot escaped Gomorrah without looking back. Barely conscious of the proceedings, she felt a tap on her shoulder, causing her to bolt up with a start. Someone had passed her the offertory bag along the row, and was waiting impatiently for her contribution. She reached into her handbag, and fumbled for one of the new plastic five-pound notes. How she disliked the feel of the unmalleable material! Her hand hovered momentarily, until she spotted the folded piece of coloured paper tucked carefully into the corner of her purse. Yes, she decided, the Reverend Jeremiah will know what to do with God's special gift, and she carefully extracted the folded lottery ticket from her purse and secreted it into the offertory bag without anyone noticing. And immediately she felt at ease, unburdened and forgiven.